More than two years after 36 people lost their lives in Oakland's ghost ship warehouse fire, the trial is now underway. The first week has been mostly procedural, and we're just days away now from jury selection. Defendants Derek Almena and Max Harris each faced 36 counts of involuntary manslaughter, one count for each of the 36 people who died in the 2016 fire. For more on what's happened so far and where this trial is headed, we're joined by our legal analyst, Michael Cardoza. Michael, if you were the attorney for Max Harris and Derek Almena, what would be your strategy here? I'd be blaming the owner who allegedly has taken off for China, and I'd be blaming her son and her daughter who showed up in court today and took the Fifth Amendment, not in front of the jury, but in pretrial motions. They got up there, the judge allowed them, the defense attorneys and the prosecution, to ask them questions, and both of them said, I'm not answering anything. I'm taking the fifth. What's your thought about that? Well, the, the prosecution can give them what's called use immunity. Mm -hmm. And use immunity means, for example, if you were a witness and I were the prosecutor, I'd say, look, Frank, you get up and you testify. Whatever you say, I will not bring a prosecution against you and use what you say in front of this jury against you. I might prosecute you, but I won't use what you say. So I'm giving you immunity for that. I think the government should give them use immunity. The defense is screaming, give them use immunity, make them get on the stand and tell us what happened to that building. But wouldn't that make it less likely that the prosecution would be able to come back and charge them? No, because like I said, if I give you use immunity, I'm telling you, Frank, I will not use what you say Right, in but the what trial, else would, but would there I be? I can get you the evidence, the other evidence. I don't need your statement. You own the building. Mm -hmm. I have fire inspectors. I have firemen. I have the police that have gone by. They have looked at it. They said the building was in horrible shape. They didn't do anything about it, right. but I could use all that to prosecute you. I don't need your statement, at least that one. Okay, so if you were the defense attorney, would you put Max Harris and Derek Almeida on the stand? I think I would. I mean, a lot of defense attorneys don't do that because they think, oh my lord, if you, the jury doesn't like them, you are taking quite a chance because then the whole case, the whole case becomes your client on that stand. And a lot of that is, does the jury like them? Mm -hmm. Do they believe what they're saying? But in this case, I would put them up because I would want them to get to know them, to show that they are nice people, that they really weren't responsible for this that they should point to the city, they should point to the owners. These guys sublet it, and I'm arguing now as a defense attorney now, mm -hmm. saying they sublet it, it wasn't their job to make sure the electrical worked, et cetera, et cetera. What do they know about electricity? What do they know about the building codes? So yeah, I would put them both up. All right, now go to the prosecution sure. side. As a prosecutor, what are you gonna say? Well, I would tell them that in this case, it was so obvious that the building was in bad shape. There were no stairs that went to the second floor where the party was happening. Instead of stairs, they had wooden pallets. And common sense would tell you this is a fire trap. And these two gentlemen should know that. I mean, you look at the building and you go, oh my God, there are no steps in or out. What if a fire happens? How do we get hundreds of people out of the building? It's not possible. The, so, defen the defense, though, is arguing that, that, that Almena and Harris uh, are being scapegoated, that, that the real people here should be the owners, mm -hmm. they're the ones who should be charged, and, and the city as well. What are your thoughts on that? Well, like I said at the beginning, I would be blaming them if I were them. In fact, those words, the scapegoating and blaming the city, uh, ha they have been banned by the judge. They actually had a motion, and the DA said, I, those words shouldn't be used in this trial. Right. The judge said, only an opening statement, defense, don't use those words there, because they really are words of argument. It's an argument. Opening statement is supposed to lay facts out. So I understand her ruling there, and I agree with it. But later in the trial, I guarantee you, and if I were the defense, you know what I'd do? I'd take two chairs, and I'd put them right behind my clients are right next to my clients. Two empty chairs, maybe three. And I'd say to the jury, time and again, there's the city, there's the building department, and they're the owners of the building. They should be in this courtroom. These two are scapegoats. The city inspected the building, the police have gone by, 
They have the permit people have gone by. They did nothing about this. Why are these two gentlemen here? They are scapegoats for this. And the DA saying they're investigating, they might hear that during the trial. I'd say, sure, we're investigating. We might go after them. Come on, guys, you did enough investigation. You're going to get them? Years now. Get yeah. them now. Yeah. Put them in the seats. If I were prosecuting, I'd have them right in those seats because I wouldn't want that defense argument. Let the jury decide of those people, the owners and the two men, Harris and Almena, who's responsible or are they all responsible? Don't leave vacancies there for the defense to argue that. And the prosecution, the government's done that. All right, we'll leave it there. Michael, thank you. Frank, welcome.